now we're going. <laughs> I'm saying all kinds of weird things on my on my screen. <sighs> Hello everyone. I know you're probably thinking, who is that weird looking guy? I haven't seen him in forever. I know I haven't. I haven't streamed since uh well those of you that know uh Mary G her sin uh lost her, her dad end of last month and she usually is part of a lot of my streams, so obviously she's you know she's not gonna wanna be out you know public. So a lot of times we would just play off stream or you know just not play at all. But I am gonna get back into it um, when she feels like it. She'll join us. I may not stream as many days, but um, I'm gonna shoot for probably. Maybe starting this coming weekend. Uh, I'm not sure yet. <clears throat> um, but let me see if I can. Oh, there's one little thing. Click off. There we go. Anyways. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, um, yes, I did dye my hair blue. If I would have thought about it, I should have dyed it green. If I was going to be wearing this shirt, then it would have looked like, more like a pumpkin. <sighs> but anyways, that's not, that's not why... We're all here. We're all here for my true story. Um, I have posted this a time or two in text form um, in my feed, uh, but never made a video of it. Um, I had actually mentioned uh, the title, basically, um, in a post. I can't even remember which page it was, but... It, but they posted something like, you know, you know, name a weird random fact about you or something like that. So I mentioned about what well, you see in the title. And someone says, okay, I think we're going to need a little bit more information about that. So I'm like, I was thinking about doing a stream about it to tell the story. And I figured, well, no better time than now. So anyways, uh, this all takes, takes place back in either 91 or 92 to give you young people a little, you know, idea of what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is before we had the interwebs and we didn't have all those fancy cellulite phones that y'all got now. All our phones, they were attached to the wall in the kitchen had just enough cord on it maybe you could go around the corner if you were rich you could get you a long cord or you could sit down in the living room <laughs> there was no playing games or anything like that when you had to go to the bathroom you were stuck just sitting there reading the air freshener can Anyways, so this is back in 91 or 92 um, in Northern California in uh, Santa Rosa. Um, I was engaged at the time. Um, I won't use her real name. I'll just say Jill. Uh, and I don't know how long I was in Santa Rosa. Um, before I heard about the urban legend of this satanic cult that um, lived in, you know, the back areas called the Cat People. Um, so the urban legend goes, they're a satanic cult, um, that they have two places where they live, hang out, or whatever. I guess you could say live. Uh, during the warmer months, they've got a spot up in the, uh, state park. I think it was called Spring Lake. I think it's called Spring Lake Park. Um, and during the colder months, there's a burned out winery. 
um, and that's where they would stay. And of course, this is all like, you know, urban legend and stuff, and apparently they're called the cat people because they have physical features of that of a cat, and the whole, you know, nobody that's ever seen them, you know, has ever lived to tell the tale, that kind of thing. Now, I had noticed that people, it was really weird, that people outside of Santa Rosa, like, you know, if they hadn't lived there or weren't from there, there was a very, very good chance they would have never heard of the cat people. But, I mean, you go into Santa Rosa, and I would probably imagine, probably if someone's been there, I'd say probably about a year. If that, they probably had heard about it. You know, unless they just, you know, aren't someone that goes out and about. But, anyways, I don't remember how I heard about them or anything like that. Um, I just, you know, had heard about them. And, uh, so, it had to have been probably around late summer, early fall. Um, I think it was probably late summer. Um, uh, Jill and I, for some reason, decided we were going to go and investigate the old winery. Um, we knew it was still going to be, it was still like about three weeks or so, probably away from like the first day of fall. So, you know, we had plenty of time, you know, they weren't going to be headed headed that way for a while. Um, so we decided we were going to go over there and check it out. Now, since it is a burned out building, it is obviously fenced off and signage and everything, no trespassing, all that kind of stuff. So Jill and I went at night. Um, I had an old rusted machete. I actually probably still have that thing somewhere. Um, I took that uh, with me, and for some reason, instead of taking flashlights, which I would imagine that her and I at least own one, but we decided to make homemade torches, I guess to make it seem more adventure-like, I guess, I don't remember, um, but she had a bottle of lamp oil because she had at least one oil lamp, duh, and... I don't know, she took a, I don't know if it wasn't like an old shirt or an old sheet or whatever, but tore them up into strips and we headed out. Oh, and we got a, a pair of pliers because I knew it was going to have to cut the fence. So we walk from the apartment. I mean, we wait till night, obviously. I mean, it was late at night. It was probably even after midnight, I would imagine. Um, but we walk over to... Uh, to the winery, and um, instead of going, uh, coming to it from the front, we came at it from the right side, uh, mostly because that's the way we, um, the way we were traveling, that's the side we were coming up to. Um, to get to the front, we would have had to walk all the way out almost to the road because they've got a hedgerow on both sides of the sidewalk leading almost all the way to the road. So our plan was to just get to the winery, cut a hole in the fence, and leave. You know, just get that part out of the way and leave and, and come back the next night. So <laughs> we were committing a crime. We were destroying a uh, private property. Um, so anyways, we cut a slit in the chain link fence and went back to the apartment. Next day, um, gathered all the same same stuff together and, you know, this time we we're going to go inside. Uh, so we go through the, I mean, you know, obviously we get there again. Um, we get through the hole that uh, I made in the fence with pliers, and just before we go inside this opening in the wall where it had burned open, 
um, we made our little torches, you know, wrap the cloth around the s sticks we found, poured some uh, lamp oil on them and lit them and do, 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 do. <laughs> and we went. Um, obviously, you know, like I said, it's dark, so the only, I mean, I don't want to say it's like, it's not like pitch black in there. If we didn't have the torches, we wouldn't have been able to see hardly anything, but there's like, you know, light from street lights and just the city. So it would still be, like I said, it still would be quite dark, but you know, there'd be some, some light. But anyways, um, so we just walk into this one room. I couldn't tell you where, you know, if it was a storage room or, or what it was. I mean, I, I just know we went through the wall and there were some big, um, like, wine barrels. And then there was, like, a little hallway, which, you know, we didn't go down. Um, and just a little ways up. Um, there was a big, uh, well, depending on what you, what you want to call it, a pentagram or a reverse pentacle, um, on the, you know, painted on the, uh, on the floor, just on the concrete. There were, uh, candle stubs, burnt candle stubs on each of the points. There was, uh, a little bit of, well, there was like a burnt, you know, a residue in the middle. Stuff had been burnt there one or more times. There was a little bit of trash there, but nothing much. Um, I mean, if that wasn't obvious, you know, enough that someone had been there. I mean, if you looking around just where we were standing, you could see, you know, empty food cans and soda bottles and, you know, uh, fast food bags, stuff like that around. <clears throat> and um, there was more uh pentagrams reverse pentacles on the on the walls and and we decided you know what we heard a little bit of a noise coming from outside to the back because we could see all the way through because the walls had like collapsed or burned through um so we could see on the other side and we could hear some kind of noises and we thought we saw a uh, light moving in the distance so we thought you know it could be the police could be security so we thought, we'll go ahead, you know, head, head home, and uh, we'll come back the next night. So, you know, head home. Next night, same thing. We take, take all our stuff with us that we did before. But this time, we decided we are going to go right down the sidewalk towards the, the, the front gates. Now, like I said, these... I mean, the, the front of the building, well, I should say just the front of the gates, the, 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 you know, to the fence that they put up, it was probably minimum 100 feet from the road. And um, there was obviously, you know, there, there was, you know, a sidewalk. I mean, you got the, the walk that goes, you know, per well, perpendicular with the road. Then, you know, once you get the building, you got that one piece that tees off so from the actual i guess you could say the pedestrian sidewalk if you stood right there where the t is it's probably a good hundred feet to the fence and i would probably say maybe half or a third of the way in is where the hedges start they're not really hedges they're uh grapevines they had them uh set up and pruned almost like hedges but these were like they were good five feet high <clears throat> on both sides and went all the way up against uh the gate um so anyways we uh we get there and um we start walking down the sidewalk and there's like there's like forest um both sides it's just kind of like someone had uh, taken a wooded area and just kind of went like <laughs> building sidewalk. That's pretty much the way it is. I think there's a there's actually a uh, small parking lot behind the building 
But that's, in, in, in essence, that's what it looks like somebody did. So it's just woods on both sides and, you know, coming around to meet the parking lot in the back. But anyways, it's nighttime again, and we're walking down the sidewalk. And we get to the spot where we uh, reach the uh, grapevines. You know, we look at them for a second, you know, don't think too much of it. It's just kind of creepy, you know. And we start walking down the sidewalk towards uh, towards the winery. And after a few feet, I hear what sounds like rustling, you know, off to the sides, like off way in the tree line. And I kind of stop. And I listen and don't hear anything. So we continue a little bit further. And then I hear the same sounds again. Except they're over about here now. So that they were kind of up. Like if you're looking at a clock, I'd say they were probably maybe, what, the 10 and 2 position. And now it's more like, you know, 9 and 3. And not just from me moving forward. It kind of sounds like that as we're moving forward, these sounds are moving back. And so we move a little bit more ahead, you know, a few more feet. And you can hear just more and more sounds. Uh, the sounds are getting further behind, and there's more sounds. And best I could tell just by just by guessing, because I couldn't see anything. Um, just by trying to, you know, figure out where I was hearing the sounds. It sounded like anywhere from eight to twelve individuals um kind of probably probably evenly divided half on each side and they were as we were moving closer to the gate they were coming closer to the opening of the grapevines and the sidewalk and we figured out that probably if we would have kept going by the time we reached the gate and turned around, we probably would have seen them at the end of the sidewalk boxing us in. So we did what you know any sane individual would do. We turned around and calmly just <laughs> walked, you know, never ran. Didn't just never ran, didn't want to risk it. Um <laughs> got out of there and we we went across. Went across the street, stood under um, a street light, and just just looked out there to see if we could see anything, anything at all. And I mean, I don't remember if she said anything. I'm sure she did. I don't remember any of that. Excuse me, but I remember as I was looking across the street. You know, there's some trees and stuff up. You know, up just like on the other side of the sidewalk. And I'm looking around, and I off a little bit off to the right, I see what looks like two yellow dots of light in the tree. And then all of a sudden the lights start moving, but it's like they're moving like this. You know. And supposedly, whether it's a fact or not, I, I never really thought about it, but apparently human eyes do not reflect light. You know, kind of like if you shine it, into an animal, their eyes reflect it, but apparently humans' eyes don't do that. Whether that's a fact or not, I'm not entirely sure. But these eyes were glowing. I mean, we didn't have a flashlight, so I wasn't shining anything in the tree. These eyes were glowing. Like I said, they were moving in the tree kind of like this. And then um, I heard the sound, um, like, you know, rustling on the ground. And have you ever seen someone or tried like when you were a kid to run on your hands and feet you know how inc incredibly awkward that is i mean i mean it's really clumsy i mean you're not going to get very far before you fall well i saw a humanoid running on all fours from from the right 
to the left from, you know, dark shadow to dark shadow. And it was like perfectly fluid motion. Like they've always done that. Like, you know, that's just the way they ran. You know, there was nothing clumsy about it. And I tried, I remember show, trying to show Jill and you know, she didn't see it. And uh, she's just like, are you sure it wasn't a deer? I'm like, I'm positive it wasn't a deer. I mean, there was enough light to pick up the silhouette to know without a doubt that it was not a deer, that it was definitely humanoid. And after that, her and I, we went home and never looked back, never went back. And apparently there, I mean, there are supposedly other stories out there that I've never seen or heard. Apparently the police know about them, but the, apparently the police are supposedly too afraid to go after them. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Who knows? They may not even still be alive anymore. I mean, what, how long ago was that when Santa Rosa was on fire? Basically a lot of California was on fire. And I remember following it because Santa Rosa was the, you know, my hometown, well, where I was born. And then I went back and stayed for two and a half years. But still, I remember watching, you know, the news and following links to follow the fire line in town to see where it was going. So who knows? Maybe it got them. Or they could be alive and well and flourishing. But, I mean, apparently there's some big sacrificial stone um, over in, uh, Spring Creek or whatever the heck it's called. I don't remember. Um, but there's supposed to be in the middle of the woods, there's supposed to be some great big sacrificial rock that they supposedly do human sacrifices on. But <laughs> that's the story, folks. I mean, like I said, I mean, people in, in that part of California, they, they've definitely heard of the cat people, but it's supposed to have been like an urban legend they weren't supposed to be real <laughs> and me and Jill almost found out the hard way that they actually were real um I mean I never saw their faces or their hands so I couldn't tell you if they had you know cat-like features I saw that one run I saw those two eyes up in that one tree I mean that's all I you know I actually saw um, so, I mean, just with that little tiny bit of information, I'm going to say, well, maybe. <laughs> but anyways, folks, that's, that's the story of how I was almost captured by a satanic cult. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoy the little story and I'll be posting it up to, uh, YouTube here shortly. So... Thank you those that are have been watching and hope you have a good day. Bye everyone. Happy Halloween when the time comes. Ooh.